Hi, my name is Brenda Mercer. I work at Miyasin Friendship Center in Medicine Hat, Alberta. I want to tell you my Indian name, which is Wakangu Washtewin. It means good, sweet grass woman. I'm Dakota Sioux, and I was born in Fargo, Pound, but I live here in uh, Red Cliff right now. So I came to the library and I was hoping to be able to show you some of the things that I do. Um, I do beadwork at work. I teach beadwork to anybody who wants to learn, actually, I will teach it. And I want to tell you why I bead and how I started to bead. So I'm just going to take off one earring because I'm going to make one of these earrings while we're sitting here talking. So I should start out and tell you that I, I and a 60 scoop survivor and I don't know I think most people know what 60 scoop is but I'll just tell you a little bit so back in the 60s I was taken from my mom my birth mom at the hospital and I was taken away and placed in a non-indigenous home which meant that I don't really know my culture a lot I'm starting to regain some of it so I don't know my language but I do know my siblings now I was raised in Shaunavan, Saskatchewan by a wonderful couple, non-Indigenous. My mom's name was Eva and my dad's name was Leo. They were the best parents ever. Like, if I had to pick my own parents, they would, they would be my pick, top pick. I found my birth family in 1987 and I found out that I have 13, there were 13 children in our family, so I'm number seven and currently they live in Saskatchewan and also in Texas, Lubbock, Texas. So I get to see them every once in a while, but being a 60 scoop survivor has its downfalls and some of the downfalls are that out of the 13, there are only six of us left. There's been some too soon deaths, I, I would say, but I have connected with my mom and my mom is 84 years old right now and my sister on reserve, Gloria, she's gonna be 65 in December. I want to tell you about beading. Beading for me is such a stress reliever. I bead if I come home from work and I've had a long day or anything and I just wanna forget everything, I bead because when I bead, all I'm doing is one blue, one black, one blue, one blue. And I'm not thinking about anything else and I really, I find it to be very relaxing. Part of the reason why I bead is I, it really connects me to my ancestors. I think about people who have come before me and were beading. I think about people now who are beading. I teach everybody, Indigenous and non-Indigenous. And I also think about the people who will come after me, my grandkids or anybody, anybody after me. Part of it is when I'm beading, it's sharing my culture, it's sharing part of me. It's, if you do something that you love, it's part of you, and I really love to share our culture. I just have to make sure that I've got enough across here. So this is um, an earring that I would show somebody how to make for their first time. It's not too hard, and the results are beautiful. I've got a lot of compliments on these earrings. These are the ones we're going to try to make these ones here. So it's pretty easy. I'm using size 11 um, seed beads and turquoise, black, white, orange, yellow, a light red and a dark red. And we're going to make this earring. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been working at the Austin Friendship Center for just over a year now. My position is a program coordinator, so I, we do a lot of programming like for parenting and for families. And I actually have a wonderful co-workers who are learning to be. But with COVID now, I'm finding that I'm doing a lot of this online. So I find that Zoom is really great to connect with people and you're able to see faces, but when you're doing things like this, sometimes it's a little bit harder to do. So as I bead, I'm just gonna um, have to like stop for every now and then just because I'm getting older, not gonna lie. And I have to make sure that I'm putting on the right colors of beads. 
usually when I bead, we have, uh, before COVID anyways, we would have five or six tables pushed together at Miawasan, and we would all sit around a table. We usually bead in circles, just like a uh, sharing circle. If you're in a circle, nobody's left out. There's nobody left behind. We're all equal. And, and usually a lot of the ladies that come to bead with me are there for friendship and laughter and tea and bannock rather than beading. Most of the ladies that I that come to my circle already know how to beat. Some are beginners, some are advanced, and uh, it's open for anybody to come. So if you would like to join us on Zoom right now when we do beating, please call me at the Me Awesome Friendship Center. That would be wonderful. I learned how to do this earring. It was, oh, I think probably about six months ago, I came across this design. I saw somebody wearing these beautiful earrings and I asked, would it be okay if I took a picture? And she said, sure. She hadn't made them, she bought them. But usually if I see a pattern or a color design that I like, I'm just able to um, work with it from the picture. That's not a problem. Now that it's so nice outside, I'll sit at home in my backyard with my fruit trees and I just sit outside and bead and it's such a quiet place to bead. For me, I think this earring would probably take, oh, probably about 15 minutes to do one earring. So in a half an hour, you could have a pair of earrings and walk out the door with some turquoise earrings. Most of the things I make right now at work or at home, I just make and I give away to family or friends as gifts or, you know, if they just like them, I just give them. Because I think part of why I do this is I find it connects us. When I talk about my culture, people, you know, they, they're kind of interested. And it goes both ways, too. When I speak to somebody about my culture, I'll ask them, you know, like, where are you from? And we kind of get a conversation going. Because wouldn't that be nice in a world where we're all able to connect more with people and find out, you know, a little bit more about each other? So I think, wouldn't that world be just a different place if we all were able to connect more on one on one? At work too, when I talk to people, when we do anything near smudging or medicine, uh, I always tell people, don't be afraid to ask me questions. There are no silly questions. If I don't know the answer, I usually go and look for it. But I'm more than willing to talk to people about my culture and share whatever. Just to put it at the top here, and then I'll show you what the earring looks like so far. So as I'm sitting here, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my family. So I have two daughters, one's 37 and one is 19. One lives in BC and one lives with us at home in Redcliffe. I'm Saskatchewan originally, but I lived here in Medicine Hat, Redcliffe area probably for about 25 years. And I really keep coming back here, so I think that says something and maybe I'm meant to be here. On the table in front of me in a second, as soon as I get to the top here, I'll hold up some of the earrings so you can see them, see some of the things that I've made. Some of them are using the same beads that I'm using now, seed beads, but lately I've been making a lot of my creations using delicate beads, which are like little tiny round tubes. They're all the same, and I really like using them for pattern work. Just, I'll just put these six on here and then I'll hold it up and show you. So this is what I have right now. It's kind of the top part without any of the colors. This is where we're going. And this is what we have. And these are some of the things that I've made. So these are fairly easy to make too. These are really fun to do and it, they don't take very long. And these would be a beginner earring also. These are using Delica beads. And so they're just a uh, a hoop that I've used and I put the beads on the outside of it in a little pattern. I use the, these are called fire colors. So we're talking black, red, orange, yellow, and white, and we call them fire colors. And we use a lot of those in our work. These are some more earrings I've made. They're feathers and just with the different colors. I really like the colors on these made some that are very long because some people like longer earrings some people like shorter earrings so I try to make you know different things for different people and then these ones are kind of like the ones we're making too 
these are very, these are kind of a beginner's thing you can do. I call this the fringe, kind of the bottom part of the earring that connects the top. I call it a fringe. I'm not really sure what the name is called, but that's what I call it. I really like the design some people make. You know, you can take this one pattern and you can use totally different colors in it and it makes it such a beautiful earring afterwards. So I'm just showing you the colors that I use and by no means is there's so many different varieties and ways you can do these earrings. But, um, yeah, it's just fun to play with different colors and see what you come up with. I think a lot when I'm beading about where I came from and who I am. And I often wonder if my grandmother and my mother sat around, you know, when they would be together. I think it would be kind of fun to do that. There. I'll just finish this fringe part here and then you get an idea of where we're going. If you have any questions or if you want to learn how to do this, you just call me at the Awesome Friendship Center. And I would be more than happy to get you in on our Zoom meeting or any classes that we offer or any programming. You just call me and I'll tell you about what we do and we'll connect. So here you go. This is that second piece of fringe. It is a little bit different shade of turquoise blue, but this is a different one and this is what we were making. So thank you so much for watching today.